So today I decided to get out my old scanner. Um, it's the uh, Radio Shack Realistic Pro 2004 programmable scanner. Uh, this device uh, is something I bought, I guess it probably was in high school or college. It's a, it's a scanning receiver to listen to, you know, special services. You could listen to police on it and things like that. And I'll, uh, I'm going to open it up. I haven't had it open up for a long time uh, and, uh, and show you what it's all about. I think I always look at it on the store shelves in the Radio Shack. It might be $300, I think it cost at the time. It was sort of my source of entertainment for a lot of time. I had it in, I guess, in my bedroom, probably next to my next to my bed or next to the computer, and uh, you could listen to all the, what was going on, the different police frequencies, and it had a couple unique characteristics that I'll tell you about in a couple minutes. But there's what it looked like, and there's what it looks like. I know it has, for instance, it has a uh, a battery to back it up. So let's take a look at that and see if I did something dumb like left, left the battery in there. I bet it's still in there because I wouldn't have wanted the device to lose all its programming. So let's see. Let's pray. I'll cross my fingers and hope that that didn't, didn't all leak. So it has an, an antenna like this, you know, extensible uh, telescopic antenna. Let's put that on there. Connects this BNC connector. So let's plug this up to the mains and see what it's doing. All right. So the first thing I see is on the screen there. It's uh, not reading anything. So it definitely lost its memory and its blinking battery. So I guess I can take that thing out. All right. I'm back and I I put a new nine volt battery in, so it'll stop doing the beeping and we can turn the radio on again. Go down to the first channel. So I lost all the programming that I had years ago. Everything was set to zeros and scan and search banks. But um, basically how it works is you can... So this is this is a scanner from before modern digital radio existed. So you'd say it's an analog receiver, which means it can receive uh, narrow and wideband FM. Wideband FM is like broadcast radio. Narrowband FM is like uh, amateur radio and what the police used to use and things like that. And uh, it can receive AM as well which is used for uh, aircraft communications and, of course, uh, broadcast radio as well. From a range of 25 megahertz up to 1300 megahertz. And, uh, and here's how it works. So let's let's pick a narrow band station that we know we should be able to get. The National Weather Service, for instance. So I'm going to say on a program, I happen to know that the nearest weather station is 162.55 megahertz. And press enter. And Wednesday night and Thursday. Our, uh, National Weather Service. What's happened over the years, though, of course, is there are less and less analog uh, frequencies that are used because a lot of it is uh, digital and it's essentially encoded or encrypted in a way that this radio can't receive. So I went through um, and found some services that are still that it can still receive, and I programmed in some of those ranges. So the two th primary functions this can do is scan frequencies that you want to scan. So let's do that. So I have some frequencies programmed in. And what we see it doing is going very quickly across two different banks. You see bank two is what it's looking at now, and then switching to bank three. And what I did is in bank um, in bank two, I put in um, amateur radio repeater frequencies in the Madison area where I live. So if I say just scan that bank, we see it scanning across a bunch of different amateur radio frequencies. Now I'll switch from, I'll say scan bank three instead of bank two. Now we see it going to these frequencies in the 120s and 130s, and the, now it says that the mode is AM, and that's used for uh, aircraft communications. So if I put it back to scanning on banks two and three, because that's the most I have in there, it might come up with something. But anyway, basically, that's the, that's how it works. The other thing that this radio can do is search. So the difference between scanning and searching is scanning is you put in a list of frequencies that you're interested in. But the other thing you can do is you can set um, in 10 banks a uh, limited search. You can say, I want you to search at this step from this low frequency, this high frequency. And so I put some of those in. So here we're in search bank three, and it's scanning the 49 megahertz range, which is one that used to be used, for instance, for baby monitors decades ago was also used for some cordless telephones. So um, switch back to scanning, scanning the two banks that I have frequencies in, but basically that's what the radio can do. This model, I remember, I think, I, so here's an example of um, 
aircraft related communications. This radio was a 300 channel model. Um, on the shelf at the stores at the same time, they had a 400 channel model, which I think is, this one's called the Pro 2004. That was the Pro 2005. The interesting thing that Radio Shack did at the time is they manufactured one radio, this one with the, com uh, the computer chips in it and that it has, and sold it as two different models, one for $300 for the 300 channel model and one is for the 400 channel model. The only difference between the two models is mine, the, actually the lower um, model, the, less, the lesser model, has one additional diode on a board inside. So uh, when I learned about that, I opened the device up, clipped that out, and instantly turned my $300 model into the $400 model. Similarly, this radio scanned what was then used as um, analog cell phone frequencies. So remember, this is in the 80s and early 90s when we didn't have even uh, flip phones yet. What people were using was, you know, uh, phones mounted in their car, those large ones that looked like a little, you know, purse-sized uh, radio that you carried around with a big battery. And so, you know, a lot of wealthy people or people that needed it for work had um, had those kind of cellular phones. The difference, though, is back then it was an analog signal. So this radio is capable of capturing that narrowband FM signal that was used by the cellular network. So just like I said, there was a diode that changed, converted this radio from a 300 channel to a 400 channel model. There was another diode in there that converted it from the, to the exact same model, but that they could sell in other countries. At the time, it was illegal to sell a radio that could receive cellular frequencies. There was no encryption or anything or a, a no digital protection of the for privacy reasons of the conversation. So for a time being, it was just that it was not you weren't allowed to listen there. Or you weren't allowed to have equipment rather that could listen there. So what Radio Shack did is they had a you know diode in there that disabled uh, you being able to listen to that range of frequencies in the 800, 900 megahertz range. And, but again, in other countries, like for instance, Australia, it was legal to have such a radio. They sold the same model, so I just opened it up and clipped out that diode. So one of the ways that I used this to sort of, it, why, it was an, why it was entertaining to me is I could listen to people's cellular conversations in that time I was listening in the uh, Milwaukee metro area. So for me personally, my sense of ethics about it was I would listen to uh, cellular telephone conversations and people talking on wireless phones in their homes, um, but I wouldn't disclose information about that to people. So it was a, sort of a, a way of uh, eavesdropping that the, the technology let you do at the time that you can't do today.